Hello, this is Hakadabeen, and today we are going to be continuing with part 2 of SCV-6500. We are, and this is going to be the first part of a main path. This path is called, uh, is known as the Warrior. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. Looking at this scroll bar here, you know this isn't going to be just one uh, on video. So let's get started. Death and the Authors. Site 87. Slots Pit, Wisconsin, United States of America. I hate stories. It wasn't exactly the truth, but she knew it'd be, it would hit harder. The man at the Palladium Blanche. She might as well have told him she hated Greeks. He glanced at the titles I predicted about of and behind him. As if for support, it read Applied Apocalyptic Metaphysics or Story or Telling Tales at the End of Everything. He nodded to himself, apparently convinced and affirmed. Nobody hates stories. An entire auditorium tore a twist in their seat to, the, to see Delphi. Ina Ibn Ines's short frame dominate the tall door frame by sheer force of personality. Fine, she allowed. I hate fiction. That's better? Judge by his tone, the improvement was marginal. That you want to answer the question? She strolled down the aisle, realizing the creaking of her leather boots and the flexing of her rayon on jumpsuit. I already forgot it. I asked what your favorite story is. I was going to ask someone who didn't show up late, but you made such a dramatic entrance. She flopped down in a chair next to the only person in the room she recognized. Dr. Udo Okuri. He looks like death warmed over. Evan has offered her a, a, a sympathetic smile before responding. I'm late because I hate fiction, which means I hate I despise pataphysics, which means you should ask someone else. You want to get call the shots? Get your own presentation. He gripped the impulpit and leaned forwards. She could hear his sneakers squeak on the stage. What's your favorite story, Chief Ibanez? She intended to consider just for a moment, then answered, The right stuff. I hate magic. Even as Archer Eyebrows, how can you hate magic? Okori remained in her seat as the auditorium emptied around them. Her eyes were haunted. You'd learn to hate air if you suddenly found yourself on the moon. What's wrong with your friend? Even as glanced up at the rumpled Adonis in the aisle. I believe you're stupid at lecture. You're stupid. My lecture was great. I'm a thaumatur, Rachel said, okay, she took off her, her glasses and pinched the bridge of her nose. Natural born. I'm 90% water, said Ibanez, you're 90% hot air, and she's 90% magic. Okori smiled weakly. Not far off the truth, since the impasse started, I've woken up every day feeling like I just gave you a pint of blood. You might try Dr. Sinclair's lab, the man suggested. Our mage might be He's something for low OEVE in here, in there. Okori it nodded endlessly. Evan has shrugged. Thanks, Dr. Whatever. Placeholder, he corrected her. Placeholder McDoctorate. She arched her brows again. Want to know how that happened? No. Ibanez slings arms with her friend and helps her up. Whew. 
Okori found a pack of syringes in the absent Dr. Sinclair's office, which temporarily alleviated her malaise. Evanez left her in the dormitory to sleep it off. Placeholder proved more difficult to shake. You know how rare it is for the O5s to declassify two ooh, ooh, double O one proposals? He asked the back of her head. His legs were long and she he walked like she had a purpose. Swan says a gaggle of horror writers in extra dimensional space intervene in our daily lives and Pikmin and then Al says the very concept of narrative is sapient. They would have let me lecture on that and freak everyone out for no reason. I didn't say there was no reason, she shot over her shoulder. I said the reason was stupid. Reality isn't stupid, he jogged in front of her and began dancing backwards on the corridor on the tip of his shoes. Our existence is divided by a network of anomalous systems. We live in an anomalous ecosystem. Chief even as something is killing off the genetic diversity, but it's not out happening evenly across the board. As one layer of esoteric weirdness contrasts, the other is expand to fill the gap. He pulled a string, fiddly he feel all the strange, fiddly piece of technology out of his lab coat pocket and waved it at her. This thing ne measures narrative fluctuations, and a needle is still moving. There's barely an inch of, le of magic left in Sloth's pit, but the power of fiction is still going strong. She grimaced. You expect us to substitute stories for actual magic? Stories are actual magic. Play Ace Holder raised his, his arms in the air, clipping off a passing agent's baseball cap. He for it to offer an apology, falling a step behind on Ivanez as he did so. She shook her head. Fine, it's all the same. They'd reached the barracks, where she was bunking for the night. She had backed against the door and plucked a key ring off her belt. Stories can be magic for our care, because my, my job is to shut magic down. She unlocked the door. I end stories, Doctor. She slipped inside and closed the door in his face. Ferryman's Landing Even as awoke to the sound of water on wood, it tapped at the edges of her perception, a rhythmic, liquid clapping, soothingly low pitch. She became aware of a creeping moisture on the back of her jumpsuit, and her first coherent and thought was, I have never peed the bed before. Her second coherent thought was, I have never gone to bed on grass before. And that was enough to propel her to her feet. The air was ice cold, and she could see her, her breath in the brief instant before her mother with the oppressive mist surrounding a river bank, stretching to infinity in two directions. The water was darker than in the space behind her eyelids, clapping against the side edge of a low overriding wooden rowboat, rocking in a breeze she couldn't feel. There were oars in the oar logs, and a heavy traveling club was flung carelessly over the stern. A bad for Dora was perched precariously on top, and moved to witness her, her approach. The key oat heaved only once, like a held breath. Hi, she said. The hat dipped down, obscuring whatever lay beneath. One sleeve swung up out of the water, or, 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 or dripping back rivulets, and pointed weakly down to wherever. It held this pose for an instant, then slapped against the bleached limbers. Why not, she said. This was clearly a dream. She waited out, feeling the chip all against her calves through her combat boots and boots, and boarded the small old craft. The heap of fabric seemed to deflate, as though achieving its goal had sapped the last of its strength. <sighs> I'll be wrong then, she sighed. The ferryman's hat bobbed rhythmically with the e dipping of the oars as the watcher pulled them along on the e estuary. After an eternity of splashing in mirror still waters and uncertain progress through an opaque cloud of white, she felt. She didn't know what she felt, but it was behind her. The fairy man's hat slid back, and she sensed that it would beckon again if it could. She looked over her shoulder and saw the city. 
She was saying in the city, the river, the boats, the ferrymen were all gone. Stone walls loomed around her, and there were all the cobbles at her feet. A street rose up a, a steep hillside, a dusky antique berg dominating the horizon. I wasn't sure you would hear me. Evanez bit off a retort. The voice was thin, weak, and piteous. Wow, I freaking read that wrong. I'm sorry, let me try that again. I wasn't sure you would hear me. Evanez bit off a retort. The voice was thin, weak, and piteous. She began to walk, and her shadow refracted in a dim in light. A myriad of silhouetted figures kept in time with her footsteps. I bring you hope. In the final hour. Who are you? She paused. And don't give me any cryptic extreme bullshit. Our time is nearly spent. She was climbing the broad chalk steps of a church and surrounded by shadowy figures which winked out one by one as she passed by them. The steps end at a smooth stone platform where a snow white robe lay fluttering in another phantom's breeze. Come to me and begin. The breeze soared into a gale and she fell to her knees as she clapped with both hands over her, her ears and shouted something fierce. The robe blew aside to reveal Site 87, Slot Outspit, Wisconsin, United States of America. It was a vision of Corian. She filled with the cold chicken sandwich on her plate. It was a story, see, plates older crowed. His, he devoured half his own sandwich in a single bite. It was a dream, even as growled. Undigested cheese. They can see in mitt, plates older waved it, waved it away, flinging a stringy piece of poultry onto a passing agent's boot. Cheese doesn't cause bad dreams. Protagonistic pro uh, activity, you know, that's a first sh That's a surefire way to get visions, O'Curry finished. She only looked marginally better than she had the previous night. No one else, else never fails to grant visions. SCP-5923 It, even as blinked. Which one's that? A lonely city in Turkey. It used to send people dreams, begging them to come home to it. Until we started funneling tourists to the in the 90s. Haven't heard a peep since. The mage steepled her fingers. Was there a river? A boat? A boatman? Even as nodded. Miss? A church? A figure in white? Even as half half nodded, more or less. A Cory leaned back, leaned back. Why I? Okay. Fifty nine twenty three. It wants something from you. Probably dying," said Placeholder. Like all anomalous things. Maybe thinks he can help it. Maybe thinks they can help us, even as mused. What? The other two asked in unison. It told me, she winced. It told me I could restore the balance, and it showed me a sword. It told me the sword was the key. She felt ridiculous. The doctor shared a meaningful glance. All right, said placeholder. Let's play by the rules. O5 says anything we do to counteract X500 has to be ritualistic. Something, think something weird force the power of the anomalous. He pointed out even as, say that you don't want to go to Turkey. I don't want to go to Turkey. She meant it. Good. You refuse to call, so we can proceed. He just said, "Okay, vision quest rules." It's not a vision quest when the vision comes first. That's just a straight up quest. 
Oh, damn. <sighs> Village of Kaya Republic of Turkey. Well, even as we remarked, this is horrible. They were standing in a snapshot of a bustling village, street after street of stocks old people with glassy looks in their eyes. A faint breeze whistled through the winding rice in townscape, and a middle-aged man with a fanny pack pitched over an apricot stall. Its contents rolled merrily down the hill. Sit them down, she called. Her ten men and mobile task force fanned out, gently guiding the swaying subjects to the ground. Okori was already kneeling. She was bubbling with Sinclair's pack, preparing her third injection of the day. What happened to them? Placeholder was negotiating the accidental fruit liberator onto his back. It's this place, Okori yawn. <sighs> she was yawning after had her sentence. <sighs> Thrives on the vitality of its citizens. So, Vampire Village? Even as fingered her hole. Oh, sir? No, Okari took a deep breath. Doesn't leech life. It mirrors it. It cares for the people who visit it. If it's subsisting on them now, there has to be a reason. Sure, said Placeholder. It's starving under the only meat in range. I'm not so sure, said Okuri. Her She was punched straight prematurely by deep rubbing, which took the cobble so hard they popped out of their mortar. Even as barely kept her feet, and Placeholder fell into the apricot cart as the street crawled over them like a tidal wave. It broke with a crash of stone and powdered paste. The buildings all fell all away and they were tumbling through a sheer black expanse. The landscape reformulated. They were now standing, crouching, and sitting in the basin of a dry fountain. The church of even as his dreams lowered, towered in front of them. The MTF was gone. Hurry. Each word was a breathless, urgent plea. Find me. Hurry. It's speaking to me, even as stepped out of the fountain. It's telling me to find the sword. There, Okori rasped, pointing out a stone on Portico at the base of the church stairs. The library! There isn't ma a magic left here, but I can... She shook her head. It's in the library! Appropriate, placeholder offered her her hand as Evan has checked and in with her squad out on the radio. The library was modest. Kayako it was only a village and really more of a tourist trap, said Ivanes. I want crack for that one. There was only one patron, slumped over or at a table with his face literally in a book. The librarian behind the help desk was peering unseeingly into her computer screen. The third argument of the room, therefore, attracted their full attention. Take it, back the white row of the hooded figure. It's in the center of the mosaic floor. Alabaster hands bearing a lot, a suspiciously shiny sh sword. Even as unbutton her holster. Don't try anything funny. The end of the end of the unknown is the end of all stories. The voice was a meal air tickle in her inner ear as she rarely approached. The end of all stories is the end of all change. The robe abruptly slipped away, revealing a glossy white marble statue of the same robed figure. 
even as Dre aimed to hear the final words. The end of change is the end of everything. Even as Fulda's chair from beside the slumbering East Scholar and dropped it against the statue's plane. He saw a note to pick up the fallen robe. Be careful, Okori Ross. She was leaning heavily on the help desk. Even as stepped onto the chair and worked her fingers between the statue's hand and the sword's guard. The cool metal lifted easily and she wrapped her hands around the attached cylinder of cool wood. She held her breath and drew the weapon free. She released her breath and examined the thing more closely. It was a short sword, less than three feet long with circular cross guard and a polished oak, oak pommel. 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 I'm not sure if I, I pronounced that right. There was writing on the edge of the cross guard, but she couldn't read it. The unfamiliar lettering made her eyes hurt. What now? She stepped down, feeling off balance with the heavy weapon in her hand. Do I stick this in something, or...? Placewater looked thoughtful. A dragon would be the obvious choice. Okori's head was cocked to one side. You hearing voices too? Even as caught over. In response, the thaumaturge collapsed onto the floor. On the floor. To, to the floor. Freaking hell, I can't say words apparently. She put her back up against the panel wood, breathing and heavily. Her companions rushed over, even as carefully pointing the sword behind her as she ran. Okori was grumbling and missing as he bent over. There's a way in here. A way to what? Place little rummage, rummage through St. Clive's satchel for another eve shot, starting the rub in the, the process. A way, Okori repeated. A portal, I can feel it. But every way has a knock, and I don't know this one. She glanced at the sword. Any further messages from the great beyond? I think we're alone now. She showed the cross guard to Okori. This mean anything to you? The mage squinted, then looked away sharply. I can't read that, but I know who could. She thumped at the back of her, her skull against the desk. The serpent's hand. Placeholder frowned as he helped her with the injection. Right, our best friends. Good thinking. The hand, the hand doesn't want magic to die any more than we do. Okori reminded him. Circumstances have changed. Where exactly is this way? Urbaness interjected. Okori reached over her shoulder and wrapped her, her knuckle, her knuckles, on the wood. Right, there was a distinct click from within the desk. Okori's jaw dropped. You didn't tell me knocks were literal, even as grabbed his sword and stood up. They aren't, Okori squirmed on the floor. Placeholder stuck his arm under hers and hauled her to do her feet. She didn't and let him go this time. Must be a symptom of the general breakdown. Or this was your role in well, narrative, the paraphrase is, 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 is suggested. Okori grimaced again, but did not argue the point. Even as rocked around the desk and rolled the comatose librarian out the way to reveal, son of a bitch. There was a cabinet door or at any level in the desk. It was open. When she saw what lay beyond, what lay beyond, she nearly dropped the sword again. How are we doing on time? I think it's a good time to end the video. And we found a good stopping point. This was part 2 of SCP-6500 and part 1 of the Warriors part of it. I'm quite sure the thumbnail will just simply say it was part 2 though. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm... Well, actually, we know exactly what we're going to be doing tomorrow, so until then... Goodbye!